So let's talk about shipping. If you play any bit of Dune Imperium, you start to realize that the most contested space on the board is this space, Interstellar Shipping. Interstellar Shipping is a really good space. Interstellar Shipping is a really good space. It gives you two freighter icons, which are these shipping icons that will allow you to move your token two spaces. Uh, this, the best space in the game, by a mile. And why is it such a good space? I'll hand it over to another member of the community. Seven Spirits to kind of share his opinion on why Interstellar Shipping is so strong. Seven, what makes Interstellar Shipping so good? I think the answer is mostly really simple. It has the highest raw value of any space on the board other than early Swordmaster. And what I mean by raw value is basically ignoring context. Maybe right now you want 3 spice to afford spy satellites? So spice is really good in context. Well, ignore that. Just look at the typical value of a board space. Normal board spaces are worth 4 to 5 points of raw value. Think Kartek. Faction spaces give influence, which is worth about 5 on its own, so they tend to be worth 7 to 8. Think Wealth. Smuggling is pretty good raw value. It's at that higher end of a non-faction space. And interstellar shipping does almost twice as much. I put it as worth about 9. So it's unusual in that its raw value surpasses that of faction space. Adding context back doesn't really hurt either. The shipping, the shipping track is pretty flexible because you, you get to choose the nature of your reward when you cash out. One drawback of the shipping track is its delayed nature. But since interstellar shipping has two freighter icons, it accelerates the getting the reward. Other than the spacing guild requirement, there are very few limitations that make interstellar shipping conditionally not useful. It can be bad if you don't have enough actions to use all your troops. It can be bad if you overwhelmingly need to prioritize card draw. It can be bad if the game is going to end before you can cash in. But these are rare situations compared to the Great Flats, which is only a great space if there's some spice accumulated. And it requires you to have spare water. Or Highliner, a great space, but it requires you to have a pile of spice. So all in all, it's a gener generically strong space that outshines most spaces on the board on most turns. So as Seven says, this space is really really good. <laughs> and everyone rushes there. So let me talk a little bit about the how people used to play Dune, Dune Imperium. So, so the first combat reveals itself. Let's say if it's a point. Red will barrel in four troops to get the point. The second player, Green. Green will come to full space and he'll get full space. Let me move this in some way. Let me just use a cube. And he, get, and he gets full space. Blue, uh, green plays a diplomacy and goes to full space. Yellow next does whatever he wants. Blue goes well, does whatever he wants. And on round 2, the green player will go to full space, gets the, gets the spacing friendship, and then start to go to interstellar shipping. This made player 2 have a very high win rate just by going to a uh, full space twice and having almost uncontested interstellar shipping. So this was early on in Dune Imperium, Rise of X. When people started to figure out how powerful this space was, space was, a new meta started to evolve. And this meta was also brought to you by some of the casters of the tournament. They talked about going to full space and what happens was that player 1 will go to full space on the first turn, on the first round, on round 2. The next player will go to full space. And when the turn marker went around, it was like your turn to go to full space. And this went on and on until someone had access and someone could go to interstellar shipping. So this was uh, what the meta was for a short period of time, until pe people figured out a way around it. 
So how you might ask? Well, the way around it was pretty simple. You pick a leader who could get you an additional faction bump. And the most powerful of them all was Baron Vladimir Harkonnen. So let me show you why. So Baron has a passive ability called Master Stroke. So at the start of the game, you choose two factions. And when you send in four troops, when you send in four troops, you can get another, can get these faction bumps. So what happens? Let's say round one. Someone goes into like the player one goes into cellar shipping, and a baron would come to hardy warriors. So this can be done in any order. It can be done in the other order as well. They'll flip over their two tokens and they'll get bumps in the spacing and also in the fremen. And when it comes to round two, they will do the do you'll do the opposite. They'll just go to full space. So turn one and two, turn two can happen in any order, but in general this was what was happening so that the Baron could get the spacing friendship round two. And this means that he can go to interstellar shipping round two as well. And start to move his icon. So this was how the meta developed and this was why the Baron in position 2 became a monster and he became quite unstoppable. Okay? So what didn't help this meta was that after player 2 got um, interstellar shipping, so once player 2 got a spacing friendship, what player 3 would do is that he'll be like, hey, I, I too want to go into inter interstellar shipping. So on player 3's turn, he would also go to full space. And the line of thinking is simple, you know, I do not... Uh, this is the best space in the game and I want to be able to send my agent there um, to go to interstellar shipping. However, what this... Ha what happens after this, right, is that the Baron... So let's, ha let's say this is round 3. Round 3, yellow goes up 1, comes back to the Baron, the Baron goes into interstellar shipping. Round four, blue de blue decides. Hey, it's my turn. You know, I go to full space, and now I'm at one. And what happens? The Baron does. The Baron goes. Round four goes into cell shipping. When it comes down to round five, Red is like, okay, it's my turn. And Red gets a spacing friendship, but the Baron still gets into cell shipping. And when it goes to round six. Guess who gets interstellar shipping? The Baron again. He gets it. He gets it round two, round three, round four, round five, round six. When it's finally round seven, maybe the yellow player or the red player can go into interstellar shipping. So, so the entire game or all the turns that is is relevant, you know, the Baron goes to interstellar shipping and kind of dominates everything. At this point in time, the troop transports was a very highly rated tech. Because it was so easy to deploy troops just by going up and down, and since you were the only one going up and down, you could do it so many times over and over again, constantly sending in three troops when everyone was just getting one troop at a time. So it was a dark time, and how have we as a community moved on from there? So these are very advanced concepts, and but you can learn them too. So what people started to do, right? is that they started to not take the shipping excess. So let me just reset it slightly. So round one. Uh, so round one, the red player gets goes full space. Round, round one, Baron goes up one, goes up again. And he gets, he goes up here. Round two, Baron will come up again. But round 3, the yellow player w w was starting to pass on full space. He's like, ah, I don't need full space. No, I will pass it up. The blue player's like, yeah, full space doesn't mean nothing as well. I will pass it up as well. And then the red player was able to go to full space on round 3. And what happens here? So what happens here is that round round 2, the Baron gets into cellar shipping. Round 3. The Baron gets into cellar shipping. Round four, the red player gets into cellar shipping. And round five, 
the red player gets interstellar stripping again. So he gets it round two, round three, round four, round five. Round six goes to the green player. And round seven it goes back to the red player. So it doesn't always work out this way. Uh, sometimes someone else can get faction access, but in this hypothetical, we'll talk about it this way. Let's just play it straight up. So there are techs and there are also combat rewards that can change the sequence of stuff. Or someone can go up to the second space and ship down and get the friendship somehow. But in, in general, this was what's starting to happen. And instead of having the Baron having uncontested, uncontested shipping access, now there, there were two players who were, who were fighting for it and not getting the rewards of shipping immediately. So as Seven said, one of the, the drawbacks of shipping right is that your rewards are delayed. Just by going up to, you don't get any rewards. You only get the rewards when you come down. And such, when two people are fighting, even though their rewards are still great, their rewards are significantly less because of the delayed nature of it. It suddenly became very hard for the person with interstellar shipping to just get Swordmaster, whereas previously it was guaranteed theirs, just by the nature of the shipping track. So this was how the meta has developed. I think it has been championed by uh, some players like Lannister and I. You know, we if you watch this play, we very rarely bother with the full, with with full space if we're in position three and four. Like it doesn't matter. Like just let other players fight over it. You know, and pick leaders that ignore it completely. And this is, I think, one of the reasons why the Baron's win rate has plummeted is that people are playing it against it better now. So it's not just about blocking hardy warriors or blocking full space, you know, it's very hard to block the, the, the Baron in position 2. In other positions, yes, you can block him quite easily, but in position 2, he's quite unblockable. And what has to be done is that you have to give the player before the Baron, and especially the player before the Baron, interstellar shipping access. Or, the, or it might not even be the Baron, it might be a uh, Hundro, or it might be a Tessia. You, you, you try to give the player before Interstellar Shipping access so that they can at least fight against each other and they'll slow each other down. So this is the idea I want to share with the community. Uh, you don't need Interstellar Shipping access yourself to win the game. I think if you watch a lot of my games, I do not always get Interstellar Shipping access. But when I have the chance to get it, I will definitely get it. But if I'm not getting to the, the friendship, I would normally ignore it. Okay, so so take this to your games. Uh, don't, if you cannot get to two, don't bother about it. Let other people fight over it. And yeah, I hope your games improve. And hopefully from positions four or positions one, you don't feel so terrible. Maybe, pe maybe from position one, you'll start to win more because people will give you inter interstellar shipping. Or from position four, you don't fight over it and you know, just do other things and find your own path to victory. You can do things like wealth, mentat, you can do things like getting steel suits and spies. All good things. I hope this video was informative and I hope uh, yeah, I hope everyone gets better and we have better games of Dune. See you around!